a Persian poet from back in the ancient times in the 13th century. His name was Jalaluddin Rumi. And Rumi has this observation. It's been very important and very powerful to me. He said, the morning breeze has secrets to tell you. Do not go back to sleep. Let me say it again. The morning breeze has secrets to tell you. Do not go back to sleep. I'd like to ask you, how many of you awaken at one time or another between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m.? Let me just see by a show of hands. And if you look around, you see that this is a universal experience. Now, what do you think that is? If everybody, almost everybody, awakens at some time between 3 and 4. Now, for some of us, we just interpret that as, all right, this is my age. I'll just run into the bathroom and I'll be right back. <laughs> and you may make that visit several times a night. I don't know. But there's more to that. And I'd like you to think, now of all of those people who raised their hand at uh, this idea that you awaken sometime between 3 and 4 a.m., how many of you, how many of you awaken at exactly the same time? Exactly the same time with a little digital clock next to you. What is your time? 3.18. What is your time? 2.20. What is yours? 4.50. So like there's a, and, and this happens repeatedly over and over again. My time is 3.13. I awaken at 3.13, night after night after night. I look over, I've got this little clock. It's not, a, it's not an alarm clock, it's just a little digital clock. I just look over, and it's 3.13 again, and again, and again. So what I had trained myself to do in, in the writing of this book, in, in, in the inspiration book, um, is to uh, put my feet on the floor and say to myself, all right, you are going to awaken because here's what Rumi said, the morning breeze has secrets to tell you. Do not go back to sleep. Do you realize that between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning, in the middle of the night, this is the time when you're closest to your source? This is the time when it's the quietest? It is the time when it's the most peaceful? When there are the least distractions? And of course in Miracles it says the memory of God comes to the quiet mind. It cannot come where there is conflict. A mind at war with itself remembers not eternal gentleness. Eternal gentleness, that's what you came from. It beckons you back to be awake. It's the most creative time in your life. Try it, take that moment that you are, const you are being called by your source and awaken and force yourself to shake the cobwebs out. And if you can't, then put your feet on the floor and say, look, if I have to go back to sleep, I'm going to sleep with my feet on the floor. <laughs> and after a while, that gets very uncomfortable and you, you'll get yourself up. Now, when I do that and I get up and I live on Maui, it's almost as if God is saying, this is why you're here. And I can't get you any other time because it's just so busy and there's horns bunk and there's, all, there's so many distractions. But here's a time when you can just be with me. Just be with your, just be in spirit. Just be inspired, inspirado. Be in this space with me. And I will then allow what creative juices that you have forgotten about because you took a, because you edged me out for so much a part of your life. And here it is. And you'll find yourself getting the right ideas. Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some interviews from some of my favorite authors, and I'm gonna list some of my favorite audiobooks that they have on Audible. And if you guys are interested, you guys can get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for the first 30 days. All you have to do is visit audible.com slash findguru or text findguru to 500-500. Audible originals are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as theater, journalism, theater, and more. Books that I'm listening to on Audible is Ask and It Is Given by Esther Hicks. And Esther Hicks is also known as Abraham Hicks and she's going to be showcased later in this video. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys get back to the audio. Just play this in the morning in the car while you're doing the dishes or whatever for the next 21 days um, if you are interested in doing exactly what I did in my 21 day challenge. By why, I mean what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. The goal is not to do business with, anybody, with everybody who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe with the tangible things we say and do. This is where gut decisions come from. You know, sometimes you can give somebody all the facts and your figures and they say, I know what all the facts and details say, but it just doesn't feel right. Why would we use that verb? It doesn't feel right. Because the part of the brain that controls decision making doesn't control language. And the best we can muster up is, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Or sometimes you say you're leading with your heart or you're leading with your soul. Well, I hate to break it to you, those aren't other body parts controlling your behavior. It's all happening here in your limbic brain, the part of the brain that controls decision making and not language. But if you don't know why you do what you do and people respond to why you do what you do, then how will anybody how will you ever get people to, 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 to vote for you or buy something from you or more importantly, be loyal and want to be a part of what it is what you, that you do? Again, the goal is not just to sell people who need what you have. The goal is to sell to people who believe what you believe. The goal is not just to hire people who need a job. It's to hire people who believe what you believe. I always say that, you know, there's, uh, if you, if you, if you, um, Hire people just because they can do a job, they'll work for your money. But if you hire people who believe what you believe, they work for you with blood and sweat and tears. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And if you talk about what you believe, you will attract those who believe what you believe. Well, why is it important to attract those who believe what you believe? They're comfortable making those gut decisions. They're more comfortable making those intuitive decisions that are driven by what they believe about the world. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. In fact, people will do the things that prove what they believe. Because there are leaders and there are those who lead. Leaders hold a position of power or authority, but those who lead inspire us. Whether they're individuals or organizations, we follow those who lead, not because we have to, but because we want to. We follow those who lead, not for them, but for ourselves. And it's those who start with why that have the ability to inspire those around them or find others who inspire them. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Take care of you. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, to our needs, our, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority, your peace of mind. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have peace of mind, if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. A lot of us, and particularly ladies, have been groomed to be sacrificial lambs. Putting their dreams on the back burner in deference to their children's dreams or their husband's dreams or their family's dreams. And forget about themselves. And then become resentful and angry and bitter. So start taking care of yourself, looking out for you. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. Hello. <laughs> you will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of dumb, stupid things. Guess what? You're not through yet. <laughs> You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> it's all right. You got to learn to be gentle with yourself. And that was it. I said, that's cool. Maybe it is. But I get people out of my life. 
that aren't good for me. One negative stroke is 16 times more powerful than a positive stroke. And if you have people around you who are not sensitive to who you are, and the people that can hurt you the most, ladies and gentlemen, are the people that you love, that you love. They're the ones that you're vulnerable to. They're the ones that can get to you. And if they're insensitive, I don't care who they are. See, if you don't draw the line with people, if you just let them run rampant in your life, to strange heavens. What's the next thing? Learn something new and tackle it in a spirit of adventure and love. Somebody said that we are not stricken by the things we do, but we are stricken by the things that we don't do. The songs that have not been sung, the poems that we have not written, the work that we have not done, the ideas that we have not developed, the dreams that we have not acted on. That's what can stricken you. That's what can block your power. That's what can rob you of your peace, of your satisfaction, of your self-respect, of the special joy that you can get out of life of special achievement. See, one of the things that contributes to, to high self-acceptance or self-approval is self-achievement. When you achieve something, when you've done something and you can stand back and look at it and say, I, I did this. What if it doesn't work out? You can stand back and look at it and say, I tried it. I went up in there. I went with it. Didn't work out. No, no. I, no but I, I value the experience. I love just the experience of doing it. I love that. So that's why I said, wait a minute. There's a place in you that you must keep inviolate. You must keep it pristine, clean, so that nobody has the right to curse you or treat you badly. Nobody, no mother, father, no wife, no husband, no, nobody. Because that may be the place you go to when you meet God, because that place has to remain clean and clear. And that has to be a place within yourself. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That is the best advice. And when you are willing to be selfish, which means you are willing to mimic the vibration of self, which means you're willing to release the thoughts that hold you apart from that and practice the thoughts that cause you alignment with that, which simply means you're selfish enough to care how you feel. That's when they call it selfish. It's one who's in alignment with that energy is more powerful than millions who are not. The only thing that you can say to them that is of any real value to them is I figured out my relationship with me and I'm constantly aware of my vibrational relationship to who I really am and what I really want. And I guide every thought I can to mesh with the wholeness that I am. I've become a deliberate thinker. I no longer create by default. I think on purpose. I speak on purpose. I act on purpose. Your thought is what creates. Your thought or focus is what activates the vibration that law of attraction responds to. Your emotions do not create. Your emotions are your indicator of what you are creating. And so, as you decide that your emotions are your best friend and you begin to say today no matter where I'm going no matter what I'm doing no matter who I'm doing it with it is my dominant intent to look for things that feel good when I see them when you see something you want and you say yes to it you include it in your vibration it's like saying come to me this thing I want but when you see something you don't want and you shout no at it it's like saying come to me this thing I do not want because when you try to push away something, it doesn't go away. All that happens is you activate it in your vibration and then you use it as your excuse to not go with who you are. Deep listening is the kind of listening that can help uh, relieve the suffering of the other person. Uh, you can call it uh, compassionate listening. You listen with only one purpose, help him or her to empty his heart. And if you remember that uh, you are helping him or her to suffer less, and then even if he say things 
full of uh, wrong perceptions, full of bitterness, you are still capable to continue to listen with compassion. Because you know that listening like that, with compassion, you give him or her a chance to suffer less. If you want to help him or her to correct his perception, and then you wait for another time. But for this, the time being, you just listen with compassion and help him or her to, to suffer less. And one hour like that can bring transformation and healing. Uh, the fear, the anger, and the despair is born on the ground of wrong perception. And we have wrong perceptions concerning ourselves and the other person. Dear friends, dear people, I know that you suffer a lot. I have not understood enough of your difficulties and suffering. It's not our intention to make you suffer more. It is the opposite. So please tell us about your suffering, your difficulties. I'm eager to learn to understand. You have to start like that, loving speech. And if you are honest, if you are true, they will open their heart and tell us. And then we practice compassionate, deep listening. And during the process of deep listening, we can learn so much about our own perception and their perceptions. Mm -hmm. And that is the best way, the only way. I think we can learn, we can always learn from our suffering. In the ash of suffering, a phoenix can be born. And that is why mindfulness helps us mm -hmm. to look deeply into the difficulty, the suffering we have. And many positive will come out of that. Mm -hmm. It depends on our way of uh, responding to the event. There, is, there are ways that can bring more suffering. That there are ways that can bring relief right away and hope. And it depends on our, our mind. And that is why mindfulness and concentration can help tremendously in bringing uh, insight. Uh, the first mantra is, uh, Darling, I'm here for you. When you love someone, the best thing you can offer him or her is your presence. How can you love if you are not there? The second mantra is, Darling, I know you are there. And, and I am so happy. Because you are truly there, you recognize the presence of your beloved one as uh, something very precious. Hmm. And you use your mindfulness to recognize that, embrace your beloved one with mindfulness, and she will bloom like a flower. To be loved means to be, to be recognized as existing. Mm. And uh, these two mantras can bring happy, happiness right away. The third mantra is what you practice when your beloved one suffers. Darling, I know you suffer. That is why I'm here for you. Mm. Before you do something to help her, to help him, your presence already can bring some relief. Yes. And the fourth mantra is a little bit more difficult. And that is when you suffer. And you believe that your suffering has been caused by your beloved one. So you suffer so deeply. Mm -hmm. And you prefer to go to your room and close the door and suffer alone. Yes. You get hurt and you you want, to, you want to punish him or her for having made you suffer. Yes. And the mantra is to overcome that. The mantra is, darling, I suffer. I am trying my best to practice. Please help me. You go to him, you go to her and practice that. And if you can bring yourself to say that mantra, you suffer less right away. See, see, you got to look at you and look at your life and find something that you can tackle and do it with love, only that which you love. Only that which you love. Let me tell you something. When you do that, you're doing it in a spirit of love. Just love it, mate. Can you, can you tell I love this? <laughs> I love it. See, I know that there's greatness in you. I know that there's something in you. Everybody has something. I don't know what it is, but you know it's something. You know it's something in you that you want to do. Everybody's got some ideas. I say to you that as you focus on something, 
As you go into action, as you hold that thought in consciousness persistently, you begin to develop the consciousness to manifest and create all kinds of things. You will begin to realize powers and abilities you have. You will realize you have miracle working power in you. That, that when you move, that when you walk, folk will see you when you come in the room and say, I don't know what it is, but there's something different about you. There's something about the way you look. It's, it's a glow about what is it? Huh? What, what, are you, what are you doing now? Um, I'm just being who I am. I'm, I'm just living out my greatness. I'm, I'm approving myself and giving myself permission to pursue my dream. Ladies and gentlemen, pursue your dream. Pursue your greatness. It's there. I know it's there. I'm waiting on you to come on out here and join me. All right, y'all, so that concludes today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys really love the audio that was in this video. And don't forget, if you guys are interested in listening to Audible, you guys can go to www.audible.com slash findguru, or you can text findguru to 500-500. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next upload. Be certain that you do not die without having done something wonderful for humanity. You may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. Try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud.